plaintiff, Jason Hammond, worked with the defendant and they became friends. Jason claims the defendant's wife left him after he accidentally butt dialed her while he was with another woman. So Jason loaned him his car to help out. However, he's suing for unpaid tolls, car insurance, and a door panel. Defendant Corey Bresnan admits that he borrowed Jason's car, but insists he only needed it because he was involved in an accident in his own vehicle. Corey claims he never agreed to pay insurance on Jason's car and denies owing him for anything. Start with you. Basically in 2008, I met the defendant. We hit it off well, became good friends, did a lot of side jobs together and uh, basically told me about his past. I was about to say y'all did a lot of drugs together. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Go uh, ahead. We did a lot of work together and uh, basically uh, we hit it off really well. He had a bad past. He was, you know, former in a gang and a lot of bad history and I seen that he changed his life around and had Ooh, a good side to him. What tone, city so. you from? Chicago. Go ahead. So basically uh, we hit it off. We continue to be friends. Then um, November 2014, uh, he butt dialed his wife while he was uh, with yeah, another what? woman. Butt dialed his wife. Wasn't November. Oh, okay. That's when you're sitting down or whatever on your phone and mistakenly dial someone. Yeah, and she kind of overheard him. She overheard him doing what? I guess uh, oral sex. Oh, jeez. Really? Yeah. So, okay, so you tell us that why. Why do you want to tell us the man? <laughs> tell us the man's business. Why? So basically, they split up. They only had one vehicle. Um, okay, so that's what I we wanted get to help to. him All out right. as a friend. I felt bad for him and his children, so I loaned him my vehicle that was All supposed right. to be for a short period of time. Okay, let me before we get to the specifics. Uh, let me hear from you, sir. He came on my job site back in, I think it was 2007, actually, and he was a little lost puppy dog. Told me his whole life story in eight hours. I basically told him he better step up because he was in one room for the whole eight hours and he was really slow. I said, you might get fired if you don't step up. And like you said, we hit it off, did a lot of side work together. And what type of work do you guys do? Carpenters. Good. Flooring. Yeah, he let me borrow his vehicle. We got, I got in a car accident and she texted and driving and smashed me in a red light and I lost the vehicle. I was out of work for six months, lost my house, my marriage fell apart. And then he borrowed me his Say vehicle. Say how it happened again. Something about the text. What are you some saying? Lady, I was at a red light and some lady was texting and driving and smashed me 50 miles an hour and took me out of work for six months. That's why I borrowed his vehicle because my other car was totaled. Okay. And, and why did your wife and the two of you get divorced or what? And not because of what he said, okay. but uh, it just. Okay. Tell me the specifics as to why he owes the uh, tolls. Concerts. I use my own iPass and I. And Let me ask. I'm talking no. to him. Go ahead. Uh, the reason he owes tolls is because uh, he never registered the transponder to the license plate, and that's how the iPass works. I have uh, proof of the violations that I had to pay. I see it. The violations occurred under his uh, control of the car? Yes. And the car insurance? Um, basically that I told him that I wasn't gonna let him use the vehicle for free, that I want him to cover the uh, car insurance. How long did you intend to allow him? It was only supposed to be for two weeks at first. And then he begged and pleaded for a little more time. So I felt bad for him. So I told him that he could use it a little more. And then I tried getting my car back like a few months later. And he kind of was avoiding me because he fell into a, you know, kind of like a dark hole with everything that was going on. So um, I. How long did he have it? Uh, it turned out to be almost five months, about four and a half months. And he was to pay the insurance for? I told him to give me 150 a month. All right, so that, how much do you want for insurance total today? 600 on All insurance. Right. And the door panel you're suing him about, a car yes, door panel? Yes, I have a picture of that as well. What did he do? Uh, there's a big burn in it. And when you mention these things to him, what has he said? He said that he uh, really didn't know much about it and that uh, he was sorry for whatever occurred and he would try to make it right. He didn't know much about the insurance, the door panel, or the iPad. The burn. The iPad I knew about, but everything else, no. The car insurance? No. I have my own car insurance and I'm able to drive other people's cars. Right. That and sounds logical because most insurance companies, <laughs> they insure whatever car you drive. I tried getting a hold of them couldn't reach him, told him I wanted him my car back. 
Um, oh, they, sir, you failed to give him his car back when he requested? No, he asked for it the one time and he showed up and he took his car and he noticed the cigarette burn. That I don't know, I drove in the pet driver's seat, I smoked with my left hand, and I never had a passenger in that car, except my 12-year-old son. Nick, girl. Yeah. That was in her car. Saying that girl. <laughs> Did he mention this insurance issue to you Never. before? I said, you're, I'm not paying it. I've had my own insurance, and you need insurance mm -hmm. no matter what for that vehicle. I have a statement from his wife. What is that? What is this going to tell me? <laughs> it's the wife, wife to put him out? Yeah. <laughs> she didn't put me out. Yeah, she did put no, you she out. Did. She didn't. We lost our house. We both got out because of the car accident. We lost everything. She didn't put me out. Where'd you go? I went to Elmwood Park to my uncle's house. Two bedroom you didn't condo. Go with her? No. You got put out. She went to her mom's because in a two bedroom condo. Mother wouldn't let you over there. You got put out. No. As Corey's bride, I wouldn't as Corey agree to pay 150 months to insure Jason's vehicle. All right. Since y'all get along so well, I'm a believer. <laughs> <laughs> I have more uh, evidence to you. What is that evidence you have? Uh, for when the I door picked panel? up the truck, I was on the way to awake, and I happened to open the center console. And when I went to grab tissue, I noticed that it was full of marijuana. All right, so what damage did that cause? I just wanted to show you that I had to stop and vacuum it out so I wouldn't get arrested. You should quit All smoking right. marijuana then. Yeah, so you know I know that. You know I know better than that. That's what I'm asking. What damage did that cause? You know y'all both smoking weed. Day. Your Honor, I never came after him for twice the car breaking down on me, on him. A U-joint broke. That's not for me just driving the car for three months. A starter wire that he put on wrong went out and I had to fix that. I spent $1,200 on that to fix well, the vehicle. Well, all I can say, sir, is so. uh, your wife, who you said never put you out, y'all cool, no problem. She said you owe the 600 Yeah. So if you believe in her, I believe in her. Judgment for the plaintiff, 1640 I... <laughs> You don't want your judgment. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Never mind. You take it? Yeah, I'll take it. All right, $1,642 is your judgment. I'm going to work. That's it. I'd like to continue to stay friends with him. I felt bad for him and wanted to help him in time of need. Just some people get the short end of the straw.